Coming up on Locked On Dodgers, Bobby Miller made his MLB debut, and it wasn't that bad. It was very actually pretty good. The Dodgers won again, clinching the series in Atlanta. We'll talk about the offense. We'll talk about Bobby Miller. And then we'll look forward with Dustin maybe move to the 60-day injured list. If the Dodgers will have a dilemma on which young starter to keep around. That's what's on tap, so make sure to keep it Locked On Dodgers. You are Locked On Dodgers. Your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans. Welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. This is the daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue. Make sure to subscribe wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. All you got to do is search for Locked On Dodgers and become a part of the exclusive group, the everydayers, the people that listen every day. So go check that out or go subscribe now so you can be part of that group. If this is your first time listening or watching, one, you're seeing new graphics on your screen if you're on YouTube. And two, I'm Vince Samperio with my co-host Jeff Snyder. We're both lifelong Dodger fans that have spent years covering the team. We spent a lot more years being fans of the team. And we're not quite insiders, but we're here to bring you what we think is a smart analysis of Dodgers and everything surrounding the team. That's what we're here to do today. And that analysis today is going to be centered heavily around Bobby Miller, who made his MLB debut, went five innings, gave up just one run against the Braves, struck out five. And yeah, Jeff, we talked about Every day, as we'll remember, we talked the other day about, you know, how come the Dodgers never seem to get a rookie that comes up and has one of those debuts, you know, six shutout or whatever it was. It wasn't quite six shutout, but five innings, one run against his Braves offense is not a bad consolation. Yeah, and he looked electric. His stuff was as good as advertised, and we've seen it before. You know, he pitched, he started a game in the in the freeway series what, last year, 2022. Uh, we've seen him pitch in the Futures game. You know, if you're really diehard, you maybe you even watched a game or two of his in the minors now that the minor league games are available on MLB TV. Uh, yeah, Bobby Miller is – he's not coming out of the blue, so we knew what to expect from him, and, and he delivered. Uh, he threw 36 fastballs. The slowest one was 98.3 miles an hour. Uh, 33 of the 36 would have showed up on your TV screen as 99 or faster, and uh, 19 of the 36 showed up as 100 miles an hour faster. Six of them were truly 100 or, 100 or faster, and then another 13 that were between 99.5 and 99.9. Just you know, electric stuff. And he's got four other pitches, and he got so uh, he got results on those pitches. He it was like about as good as we could have hoped for for a guy making his debut. The thing that I was most impressed with was he attacked the zone, and even though he did, he got too deep into a few counts, but he rarely backed down. Uh, even, I mean, I think he struck out Matt Olson on like the eighth or ninth, uh, pitch of an at bat, you know, it was a long at bat and he still got the job done on a high fastball, uh, only walked one guy. And so even though it took him 90 something pitches to get through those five innings, obviously the Dodgers are hoping for a little bit more efficiency next time through, but, uh, all in all about as good as we could have hoped for. Yeah. And it started, a you know, a bit of a mixed bag in the first inning. Dodgers put up a run. First pitch of the game, Ronald Acuna hits a hot shot, but right to third base. He gets, you know, one pitch, one out against Acuna. Uh, he said he could breathe a little bit after that. He ended up getting the next out on another ground out and then gave up a hard single then a hard double. And I think after that, he kind of realized, okay, these guys can hit fastballs. So I'm going to have to mix in a little bit more. And he kind of, you know, that's what he started doing. He started mixing in a little bit more and moving the fastball around. And yeah, like I said, it was a nice poised start. His off-speed stuff showing up obviously was probably the biggest difference between him and Stone so far in their you know first couple starts. Is that you know Stone's changeup wasn't really working, and he doesn't necessarily have the fastball to kind of work around it, and didn't have an out pitch. Whereas Miller kind of moved stuff around, started seeing which what was working for him, mixed it up, and you know ended up finding some strikeouts there in the last few innings. Uh, I think the last 13 batters he retired or last 14 batters, he retired 13 of them. So, you know, he started cruising there in the middle and yeah, he looked good. And and obviously it's his stuff's not always going to look this good or, and hopefully it does, but you know, realistically not, but the fact that he has four different pitches to go to and they were all effective tonight means that it can all be effective in the future. 
And it's one of those things where, okay, I don't have this pitch tonight. I got three other pitches or I don't have two pitches tonight. I still have two pitches and then I can use the other one to kind of, you know, get by. And that was kind of the biggest thing for me. We've seen it. And then obviously, yeah, throwing hard is, is fun and seeing the hundreds light up is always fun. And, you know, he's still going to, he's still going to learn how to use his fastball a little bit differently and a little bit better. And he, you know, he, like I said, he started moving it around once he plays with it up in the zone a little bit more, that's probably going to be, you know, learning the high fastball is probably one of the last things you learn as a pitcher um, when you throw so hard and you've probably used to overpowering everyone. And when you get to the majors, you're not going to be able to overpower everyone. So you have to place everything well, uh, but all in all, I mean, I can't complain for a first start. Yeah. That first inning, I think was a learning experience for him. Like you said, uh, he allowed four hard hit balls, in the first inning, only two the rest of the game, the last four innings he pitched. And, uh, you know, the, like you said, there there were those three, the ground out and then the single, the double. All three of those came on 100-mile-an-hour fastballs, and all three of them left the bat at a lot more than 100 miles an hour. 114.3 uh, on Acuna's ground out, 105.9 on Murphy's single, and 112.2 on Riley's double. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Rosario's ground out to end the inning was 98.9. Uh, and then after that, he had uh, Marcelo Zuna had a 97.9 mile an hour flyout, but that was at a 48 degree launch angle. So it had a 0 10 batting expected batting average. So, you know, hard hit technically, but not well hit. And then a 96.2 mile an hour ground out by Sean Murphy at a 310 expected batting average. So a little bit of luck there. But, you know, it's kind of you, you figure Baylor's going to get more efficient. Maybe not immediately. It, it may take some time. Um, it's it's kind of a running theme with young pitchers. I remember having this conversation between you and me talking about Dustin May back in 2019. You know, he needs to get an out pitch. He needs to, you know, finish counts earlier, either make him hit the ball or, you know, these foul balls can just drive you crazy. That Really, the Braves drove up the pitch count on a few long at-bats. You know, he, like I said, yeah, Miller only One inning was him. a 10-pitch at-bat and then an 8-pitch at-bat. He got both outs, but – yeah. Yeah, but it, when you take 18 pitches to get two outs, you know, it, it's hard to have an efficient inning because you already didn't. And so, you know, there will come a time when either he will uh, be better at inducing weak contact or a little bit better at putting guys away. We can't necessarily expect that to come overnight, but I do think each start it'll probably get a little bit better uh, overall. You know, it, it's going to be one of those things where if you look at the the overall trend line, it's going to, look good but each individual one there's going to be ups and downs and and uh you know the good news is dave roberts said that uh bobby miller is staying in the rotation for at least one more time through and so uh he'll make his dodger dodger stadium debut for the third time uh on monday against the nationals most likely i say for the third time because he did start against he uh, started in the freeway series last year and the futures game so it'll be his third start at dodger stadium but the first time as a major leaguer and uh that should be fun. I, you know, I guess we'll see if I end up driving down. Uh, you know, I, I would definitely like to be there, but I, I didn't fly to Atlanta for this game. So I don't know if I'll come down for, for his first home start, but I'm excited that he gets another one. And, you know, we're going to talk more in the third segment about, you know, what goes, you know, beyond that. But uh, I, I'm excited that he gets at least one more. Yeah. That, and that's a good sign because like I said, if we, we talked about it, he pitches well, you know, why not give him another one too, especially considering that May and Julio are both going to be out for at least two times through a rotation. We learned Dustin May is going to be out for a lot more than that. He was placed on the 60-day I.O. Like I said, we'll talk about that in, in a later segment on, on kind of what that means for the Dodgers. The other part, too, of this is, you know, shout out to Max Muncy. He made a lot of nice plays over there at third base. You know, that first one of the game, 114 miles an hour, like that's not easy to do. And, you know, he handled it, made a couple other plays to his left, you know, really helped out. When I saw Bobby Miller pitch once a couple weeks ago. Uh, an OK, well, for OKC in El Paso, his defense let him down tremendously. He didn't pitch very well beyond that. Uh, and the defense really helped him out. We saw, you know, Gavin Stones not hasn't been helped too much by the Dodger defense his first couple times through. So it was nice for the defense to come through, especially Max Muncy over there at third base, who, you know, we haven't talked about him defensively in a while because he's been playing pretty well overall anyways. Yeah, Oral Hershiser made the point during the game that uh, one of the ways – that it's actually easier to pitch in the big leagues is you have better defense behind you. And, uh, you know, not always the case, but uh, it, tonight it definitely was for sure. And, uh, you know, it also helped that the offense helped him out. Yeah. Segway alert. Yeah, there you go. Offense is next on, on our tab. Uh, Dodge put up eight runs and four against Spencer Strider, four in the first two innings. We'll talk about what that means for Bobby Miller, what that means for the Dodger offense and, you know, kind of how it was one of those nights for the offense where the starting pitcher did what he was 
we thought he was going to do, uh, but the Dodgers were able to get to him anyway. So that's what's on tap. So make sure you keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. And Rocket Money is right up my alley because I'm always signing up for subscriptions that, you know, seven day trial, 14 day trial, 30 day trial. And then I, I usually try to set reminders to remind, to remind me, okay, cancel this on this day, cancel this on this day. Sometimes I forget, sometimes I forget to put the reminder. Um, or sometimes I'm not home when, when the reminder does come up and then I forget later on. So Rocket Money can have, help you with that because they can cancel subscriptions for you. They can help, you know, take a look at what you're spending. You don't, you probably don't even know what you spend on a monthly basis if you if you're not super deep into your, into your financials. So Rocket Money can help you save money there. Save money to have more money for Dodger games or or going to Dodger games and spending money at the stadium or after the games, wherever you want to spend it. So go check out Rocket Money. It's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. That's a lot of money. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash MLB. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash MLB. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. And becoming every day or by listening every single weekday morning, Monday through Friday, we're here for you for about 30 minutes. And again, if you want to listen to us, wherever you get podcasts, YouTube or the Sirius XM or Sirius XS, X, XM app, that's never going to be easy to say, uh, by searching Locked On Dodgers. You can also listen to the home broadcast of every game right there on the SXM app by searching Dodgers. And if you can't watch the game, you can listen to it. So, um I definitely was watching the game on uh, last last night because I wanted to see Bobby Miller pitch. I wanted to see the Dodgers offense. You know, Spencer Strider is a, a, one of the best pitchers in baseball at the moment, and you know, it's it's even though it's against the Dodgers, it's still fun to see when pitchers, good pitchers, are pitching. Um, fortunately for us as Dodger fans, we got to see the Dodgers put up four runs in the first two innings, and then Spencer Strider, you know, he finished his day six innings, eleven strikeouts. And if you would have told me that going into the game, I would have been like, yeah, that sounds about right. But the fact that the Dodgers scored four runs was a big plus. The fact that they put four runs up in the first two innings, you know, definitely probably helped Bobby Miller settle down a little bit in, in his mind. Uh, he didn't have to focus on being perfect. And, you know, Will Smith came through a couple of times, uh, especially after the day where Braves fans on, on social media were, were at his head for being hit in the head by Marcelo Suna. So, uh, you know, get on the offense. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to listen to what you said yesterday about the Smith Ozuna stuff, but man, it's it's amazing how much fandom can blind people. Like Marcel Ozuna is a literal wife beater, and Will Smith is literally Captain America, and and yet you know, fandom just makes people like. I am so glad that I've never put myself in a position where I have to defend Marcel Ozuna about anything. But you know, whatever. Uh, Maybe, maybe maybe they can let him play the outfield sometime, and then we can have some more fun at his expense. Um, yeah, you know, the offense did a really good job. Will, Will Smith is just so dependable, you know, had two huge hits for the Dodgers. Uh, kind of showed why or one way where having good teammates can help uh, a player's stats because Will Smith's first hit of the game is only a hit because the infield was in. That's a ground out to short. Uh, if the infield wasn't in, but because the infield was in, it, it's a base hit. And, uh, you know, in that situation, he knows with the infield in, you hit the ball hard somewhere, chances are it's going to find a hole. And uh, he did great. And then the next time it's like, well, now I got a bunch of runners on base. Let's drive in a couple of them. And and he ripped a double. It's, you know, the, the offense, it's about a week now, right? That the offense has just been, because even in that series against whoever they just got done playing, the Cardinals, they scored a bunch of runs. They just, you know, the pitching was lousy, but the offense has been showing up and it's what what they need to do. Like we've talked about this several times that with the pitching in the in the shape it's in right now, the offense has to carry the team right now. Bobby Miller pitched great, uh, but that's not going to happen every game. And like you said, part of the reason Bobby Miller pitched great is because he had a four-run lead. And so you're a three-run lead, a four-to-one lead. And it, so he's able to, relax a little bit, pound the zone, knowing, okay, worst case scenario, Acuna hits a home run. 
okay, we still have a two run lead. And so it's so much easier to pitch in those circumstances, especially when you do have all the nerves and excitement of a major league debut, having a lead. So you really can just trust your catcher, pound the zone, all that stuff that you, you know, you say as a little league coach, yeah, pound, pound the strike zone. Good things happen when you throw strikes. I say that like 85 times a week coaching this 12 U team. It's the same thing with the dude making his major league debut. And so the offense really helped him out to let him do that and just, just, Will Smith puts the fingers down, you throw the pitch, execute the pitch, and good things will happen. And it was, yeah, I can't say enough good things about the offense. Yeah, and what I talked about on yesterday's episode with in regards to the offense was it's got to come from the top five guys. The top five guys are all hitting above average right now. They're all capable of being, you know, getting carrying a team offensively. And if two or three are rolling rolling at the same time, then, you know, the offense is getting carried. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, Jason Hayward hit the home run, but six of the eight runs scored were by the top five guys in the lineup. You know, Will Smith had three RBI. Muncie had an RBI. JD had three RBI. So, like, those top five guys got the job done. And then Jason Hayward contributed. You know, Miguel Rojas got on base and ended up scoring. Uh, didn't get a hit, but got on base, you know, contributed. And, you know, Outman going 0 for 4 and Peralta going 0 for 4 doesn't hurt you that much when your first five guys are putting up six runs a game. So that, that's a big part of it. And, you know, obviously that's not always going to happen. But, you know, Mookie's looked better as of late. He, I mean, he's been good all season, but, you know, he's starting to get on base in that first inning. And the Dodgers are starting to put a little bit more pressure in that first inning. You know, he rips a double. You know, he moves over to third. You know, at the very least, the be best part about Mookie Betts getting on base, especially if it's a double, is that either Freddie's going to drive him in or Freddie's going to move him to third realistically. He, you know, Freddie's a, a professional hitter, as they say, and he's going to get that done. And then, you know, Will Smith has a, a variety of options. It was interesting that the Braves went to infield in that early in the game. And Mookie would have scored regardless because Smith didn't hit it that hard to where if they were playing normal depth, if Mookie was running on contact, he might have scored it. He probably would have scored anyways, or at least would have been a, a play at the plate. So, yeah, like I said, it's exactly what they need. Um, Spencer Strider has been, you know, a, a top Cy Young candidate. He's been good all season and, uh, he got tagged up for four runs in the first two. Yeah. Like I said, he got the six innings, 11 strikeouts, but you know, it didn't matter when he left the game and he's losing. Yeah. And the other thing that the offense really did was capitalize on when they were given extra outs because those, you know, three of those runs were unearned against Strider because with two outs, Var uh, Rojas hit that grounder to, to what's his name, Matt Olson, and he booted it. And then the Dodgers got, what, three or four straight base runners after that. Uh, and so it's hard to, you know, the, the error helped. The runs show up as unearned. But the Dodgers got to Strider that inning. It's, you know, when you give up four straight two-out hits or three straight two-out hits or whatever, you know what, you deserve an earned, earned run or two on your, on your ledger for that because, you know, part of being a pitcher is being able to overcome your – and that's why teams don't look at ERA as much as they look at – you know, things like war, because war isn't based on earned runs. It's based on how well do you pitch? And, you know, the fact is when, when you're an ace like Strider is, your team expects you to shut down an inning, to pick up your first base with two outs, one runner on base. It's like, okay, I know it's the top of the order, but you got to pick up your first base and do better than that. And the Dodgers offense didn't let him do that. It wasn't a failure by Strider. It was the Dodgers offense is really, really, really good, especially that top of the order. They hit the ball well, and they didn't let him off the hook. They made Olsen pay for the error, and that's what you have to do. When teams you know, teams are going to make mistakes, you're going to make errors, and the good teams capitalize on those and tack on a couple runs because of them. Yeah, and like you mentioned, with two outs, the Dodgers have the most runs scored with two outs. You know, Joe Davis and Oro and or whoever's on the broadcast kind of mentions every game. That's because the Dodgers keep scoring runs with, with two outs almost every single game at this point. So, yeah, great job by the offense. You know, the, they we talked about these next six games. They got to split them to us to kind of feel decent about it. They already have two of those three wins that they were going to need for that split to go for the sweep, you know, uh, today. They have a day off finally, and then they go to, to, to Tampa Bay for the weekend. So good job on the offense. And before the game, we learned – uh, a couple things we learned that Dustin May is going to go on the 60 day injured list, which means he's out to at least the end of July. And we, and then after the game, we learned Bobby Miller is going to get at least one time through the rotation. What we're going to talk about next is if Miller has another start like he does today, last night, and Gavin Stone has another, you know, mixed bag of a start, 
will the Dodgers have a decision once Julio comes back of who is that young pitcher that stays on the roster? So that's what's next. Make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bird Dogs. And Bird Dogs, those those nice people at Bird Dogs sent us some shorts or sent me some shorts. I think Jeff got them for his for his son. But either way, one thing Jeff and Jeff's son and I have in common is that we love Bird Dog shorts. They're comfortable. They are cool. You know, like I said, you can wear them to school. He, I think he wore them to school. I wear them out when I, you know, go to the store or going to, I went to a brewery last night, uh, you know, wore it with the homie for his birthday. So they are versatile. They're comfortable and they're fun. You know, the bird dogs is, that just sounds fun when someone say, Oh, where'd you get those shirts? Oh, I bird dogs. So, you know, that's probably an unintended consequence of the name, or maybe it was an intended consequence. I don't know, or not consequence, but you know, that, the, the positive connotation of consequence. So whatever it is, bird dogs is there. They also have pants for those that wear pants. I'm not a pants wearer. So, uh, but go check them out. They are great. They're comfortable. They have this liner inside. So if you're someone that, I don't know, maybe you don't like going commandos, as they say, uh, this kind of helps you out because they do have a, a liner in there, kind of like swim trunks, uh, that make it really, really, really comfortable. I'm, I'm not a, you're not usually a fan of that, but uh, I've got to say that these have turned me into a little bit of a fan of that. So, Bird Dogs, go check them out. And right now, if you go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB and enter the promo code locked on MLB, they'll throw in a free custom bird dog Yeti style tumbler with every order. I also have that tumbler. It's perfect. It's not, you know, it's not too big, not too small. It's perfect for keeping your drinks, hot drinks, hot, cold drinks, cold. Got the bird dogs logo on there. So you can show off. So that's locked. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. And then enter the promo code locked on MLB and you get a free Yeti style tumbler with every order. So go check out bird dogs today. Thank you once again for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen. If you're an everydayer, thank you for being an everydayer. If you're not an everydayer, that just means you got to listen a little bit more and then you can be part of that everyday group. Because when you're part of the everydayers, we can talk about stuff on here that comes from the past. And then you can be like, oh, I remember when they said that. Instead of us always saying, oh, we said on the other day or this, you know, you'll remember on your own without us having to tell you. So go join that and then go listen to us on SXM app or Sirius XM. Search Locked on Dodgers. That's also where you can listen to the home broadcast for today's game against the Braves. Dodgers go for the sweep. Just search Dodgers and you can listen to the home broadcast if you're not around to, to watch it on TV. So last part here, like I mentioned, uh, Justin May, 60-day injured list. Julio's going to throw a bullpen this weekend. We'll see if he's going to have to miss more than the 15 days of his injured list. But either way, there's going to be an opening in the rotation moving forward. And Dave Roberts had already said Gavin Stone would get about three times through the rotation. That was before they put May on the 60-day, which means realistically he would have more time on there. Bobby Miller looked better in his one start realistically than you know Stone looked in his two starts so far. That can change very quickly with one more start. But let's just say Bobby Miller has another start like he did last night. Gavin Stone has another start like he had, which was you know a mixed bag, not missing too many bats, uh, not helped out by his defense, which we won't hold that against them. But either way, the same kind of start Stone had, came same kind of start Bobby Miller had. You know, what the Dodgers consider Miller moving forward a little bit more, knowing that you know they've they've kind of babied him to a certain extent so far. Uh, or would Michael Grove somehow find his way into that mix as well? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I wonder if, like, if for me, when they put May on the 60-day injured list, it didn't really change my mindset at all because, you know, we, we said right off the bat, well, he's out for at least two months, you know, and, and that's what the 60-day is. And so nothing really changed there. And so the fact that Roberts probably knew May was out for two months at least when he said three starts for Stone, and so maybe they had already been planning on splitting these up between Stone and Miller, and then it was Julio's injury that injury that forced them to to rush the the Miller thing. But I could see them, you know, still kind of doing that same thing. Whether it's you know, uh, if we say that that May misses a total of how many starts would a guy make in in uh, about twelve starts probably? May misses twelve starts, and they do. You know, Stone has already made one of those. If Stone makes six of them and Miller makes six of them, they can still kind of, you know, send, send them back and forth between the minors. Let them. I, I think they'll want to bunch them together just because of the the limits on how many times you can option a guy. It's doubtful that either of them will come close to the five option limit this year anyway. But you know, uh, it makes sense to cluster them. 
Uh, and so, you know, let, let stone go a couple times, let Miller go a couple times, and then you can rest them more in triple a, you know, if you want to manage their innings or their, their workload or whatever. Uh, but I do think that now that Miller has debuted, I feel like he, he immediately jumps, definitely jumps past, uh, uh, Michael Grove on, on the depth chart and, uh, you know, the, the only reason I can see Michael Grove making any starts is if if it's a workload thing, because stuff wise, uh, he's not anywhere close to Miller. Uh, he's not close to Stone. And, uh, you know, and like I said on yesterday's episode, Stone needs to pitch in the big leagues to learn how to pitch in the big leagues. And that's one of the hardest things about being a young pitcher is there are certain lessons you cannot learn in AAA. And so I think the Dodgers are going to be committed to letting both Stone and Miller learn those lessons that you can only learn in the big leagues and trying to do that in a way that still allows the team you know, to be successful. And most of that will come down to the offense a lot of the time. Uh, but I, I expect them to kind of split May's, May's starts. And this is all assuming that Julio comes back healthy because – or, or that, or that somebody everyone else, else that somebody else doesn't get hurt, you know, you know, Syndergaard's finger doesn't fall off or whatever. The the fact is, we joke a lot, but uh, mo- like most jokes, it's rooted in truth that these decisions are usually made by by uh, Mother Nature or Mother Injury or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and you know, Kershaw hasn't pitched a full season in like six, seven years. So realistically, even if he does stay healthy, like, do the Dodgers want Kershaw making thirty starts? Probably not. So at some point he might get either skipped, skipped or, you know, Phantom IL, whatever the case is. So, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. And and I guess the one thing, it's all going to be dependent. Like, it's going to be a fluid situation the rest of the year just based on everything. You know, the Dodgers don't have anyone that's necessarily dependable, you know, 200 innings type of starter. Julio was that guy, and now he's on the injured list with the, you know, the groin thing. But it's going to be fluid. So, like, let's just say you want, okay, we don't want Bobby Miller to make more than 15 starts or throw more than 100 some innings. You know, we don't want Stone to throw more than this many innings. You know, I guess that's in that sense, that's where Michael Grove will fill those gaps, kind of like you mentioned of, okay, you know, you know, it, it's, it's end of July. Bobby Miller or Stone is already more than 75% of the, what we want him to throw this year. We might have to slow him down a little bit. All right, Michael Grove, you're going to get a couple of starts now uh in that mix and you know, like I said hopefully everyone stays healthy so they can play it that way because if not if other guys get hurt then you know they are gonna have to get thrown into the fire and they're just gonna you know that's the way it's gonna go and you know it's not a guarantee the Dodgers are gonna get someone at the deadline that's a you know quality starter they're gonna try but it's not necessarily that one they're gonna be available to it's gonna be something the Dodgers want to pay for considering there's a lot of teams that are going to be desperate this year to try to you know find their way into the playoffs and and try to catch a run like the Phillies made last year and like the Braves made the year before. So it's a different dynamic before the Dodgers could make all these deadline deals. And, you know, realistically it didn't cost them that much, especially for people that they, you know, would usually target guys that were going to be free agents in the off season. That's not necessarily the case now. And, you know, the Dodgers do have guys that are probably better than a lot of these pitchers. They might, go after that might be available at the deadline, you know, with Miller and stone, depending how they, you know, progress throughout this season. So there's a lot of question marks, but you know, it's hard to speculate, like you mentioned, because realistically it'll cough kind of figure itself out the way it goes, the way it's been going for the, for the Dodgers this season and in the years past. Yeah. I just feel so bad for Ryan Pepio, you know, pitched well in the spring, earned it, earned a spot in the rotation and then gets hurt. Now he's out till at least the all-star break probably. And, uh, and who knows if there's going to be a spot for him when he when he does come back. Uh, so yeah, it's I feel terrible for him. But yeah, I mean the the depth that it's weird. The Dodgers both have a lot of pitching depth and no pitching depth right now at this moment. You know, we're we're talking about options between two really good pitchers who's going to get the starts, but also, you know, one of the guys who's going to be getting starts is Noah Syndergaard, who's not really good. You know, it, it's just kind of the the way things work right now. Um, but hopefully, I, I think the Dodgers probably have October in mind with everything that they're doing to say, okay, let's get these guys experience, but also keep them rested so that, you know, if we need Bobby Miller and or Gavin Stone to help the team in October, we want them to be ready to do that. And that includes both experience and, you know, rest and, and fatigue and all that. Yeah. And the other part is, you know, at the deadline, 
they can target what they need depending how these guys progress. If, you know, if they say, oh, you know what, the reliever market's a better market for us this year than starters. Okay, then, you know, Miller Stone, you're going to stay as a starter. Or if, hey, you know, the starting pitching market's a little bit easier for us to get into than the reliever market, you know, Stone or Miller, you might be, you know, working in some relief toward the later part of the year. So there's a lot of options. The, the reason the Dodgers have this depth, the reason they, you know, continue to churn out prospects and that player development is for reasons like this. And, you know, even with the last couple of years, it's, you know, it's been down a little bit on the offensive side in terms of depth, you know, the pitching is, is right back where it was. There's a lot of young guys in the, in the system right now that are probably going to be top 100 prospects by the start of next season. And then it's all going to restart again. And, you know, and like you mentioned, Pepe was one that uh, who knows where we're going to get from him. And, you know, maybe he comes back and they say, hey, we need you in the bullpen uh, because, you know, uh, these guys are doing great and you're not built up. And it's going to be easier for you to help us out uh, by building up to like like two innings at the most in a bullpen style role. So, there, like I said, it's a fluid situation, uh, as, as we know, as Dodger fans. But it's exciting, you know, seeing all these guys already here. You know, I didn't think Bobby Miller would get a start before May and, and before the month of May, not before Dustin May. Uh, and it ends up being a little bit because of this to me and Julio. So that's how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Jeff, anything else before we head out? Uh, who's pitching for the Braves today? Uh, I know Gonsolin's pitching for the Braves. It's not a – some uh, – it is – I forget his name. He's a uh, elder. Okay. Um, what's his name? Bryce? Bryce Elder. Okay. Uh, it just sounds like a dude. His name would be Bryce, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> white people problems um 206 era and nine games started okay so yeah probably pretty good but the dodgers have beat the the two guys who i think coming into this series the braves were thinking okay well we should win those first two games uh you know rookies against our two big guns and then you know we'll game three will be the one that's the battle and so hopefully gonsolin can can continue to pitch well and the offense can continue to you know Hope they can bre- treat Bryce Elder like the Bryce Elder he is. Uh, let's get a sweep here, because then, you know, we've already guaranteed at least the split of the rest of the series, and uh, the and then we can, you know, get greedy against the Rays and try to win that series too. Uh, yeah, you know, offense. Hopefully they can show up because it's been it's been fun to watch lately. Yeah, definitely. All right, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen. Come back tomorrow, and we'll talk about this game, Tony Gonsolin versus Bryce Elder. Dodgers going for the sweep. You can Remember, you can listen to the game, the home broadcast on SiriusXM or the SXM app if you search Dodgers. You can also find us on there if you search Locked on Dodgers. You can listen there. You can listen wherever you get podcasts. You can listen and watch on YouTube. There's a lot of ways to do it. So if you're not an everyday already, you know, it's a little bit, little bit of laziness on your part. There's a lot of different What's wrong to, with you? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to find us. And there's a lot of hours in the day to to find the 30 minute whole, uh, you know, 30, 30 minute segment of your day. So go do that. Tell your friends and family about us. Tell other daughter fans in your life about us. And remember, you can always find us on social media, Twitter and Instagram. I locked on Dodgers. Jeff is on Twitter at Snide Dog. I'm at Vince since 91. DMs are open on all those accounts. You can also get a hold of us via email, lockedondodgers at gmail.com, or leave us a voicemail or send us a text at 323 863 5625. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Tell your smart advice, pay podcast, Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one. We'll talk to you tomorrow.